Dear brothers and sisters, as we talk about what a pure heart constitutes, subhanAllah, there is so much emphasis on the heart within the body of ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu A heart that is pure, a heart that is firm, a heart that is focused, and if that heart is proper, everything else is going to be proper. And there's this intentionality about always looking after it, even if all of the outside seems to be healthy, to make sure that you're constantly scrutinizing your heart. And there's this one hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that's profound, especially as it pertains to these next crucial few weeks before Ramadan. That Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As ta'ala says, I said to the Prophet ﷺ, Man khayrun nas, who is the best of people? So he said, a person who has a pure heart and a person who has a truthful tongue. So the Prophet ﷺ gave the qualities. He said, the best people of this ummah are people who speak truth and people who have purified hearts. And he said that we said to the Prophet ﷺ, we know what a truthful tongue is, Ya Rasulullah. What is a pure heart? Can you be more specific as to what a heart being pure is? He said وسلم, that it is a heart that is first and foremost, God-fearing, conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, taqi, it's God-fearing. Secondly, it is naqi, it's pure. Now by the way, these first two traits here shape the rest of the hadith. Meaning what, there's a category here of taqwa, a category here of being God-conscious, which means that it will never violate the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon it. And then a naqi, the pure side of it, there's a category here in regards to how it relates to other people. It's pure in regards to what it holds in regards to other people's. It holds an awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that doesn't allow it to fall into sinfulness, at least not in a knowing, knowing fashion. So it's so in awe and enamored with its Lord that it purifies itself from what would compromise that sight and the integrity of that sight upon it. Then the second part, naqeen, refers to what? Particularly where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions uh, transgression and envy. It doesn't hold transgression and envy. Transgression refers to the hope that someone else will get hurt or the desire that should the opportunity present itself, I will inflict harm on this person. Okay? How can a heart be a transgressor? Because the heart intends. So if the heart intends transgression, and the only thing stopping it is that it hasn't found a moment or an opportunity to hurt someone else, it still holds a transgression inside of it. And hasad is a very specific disease of envy, that you hate someone for something that they have that you wish you had. You hate to see someone else in a position that you feel like you deserve. You hate that someone else has a life that you feel like you should be living. Hasad. It's in the heart here. And it's going to shape a particular type of mindset. And it's going to shape your actions. And it's going to consume your thoughts. And it's going to dictate your actions. It all goes back to that. And they say, who shows signs of that, O Messenger of Allah? You know, you're talking about a deep internal feeling. Who shows signs of that? Like, what are the traces of a person that has that type of quality then, Ya Rasulullah? You know, speaking the truth is so obvious. But what are the signs? And he responded, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a person who really despises superficiality. Yes, not dunya here doesn't mean you hate the world. It means you hate worldliness. Like they, they really are turned off by worldly enamor, and instead, you hibbul akhirah. Like they love the hereafter. They actually love the akhirah. The concept of the hereafter is one that pushes them to action. It's what consumes their thoughts. It's what gets their hearts excited. You hibbul akhirah. Now look at the honesty of the companions of the Prophet They said, look, the only person that really fits that description the way you just said it is Abi Rafi' who was a freed slave of the Prophet And the Prophet stayed silent. So they said, so then who resembles that type of person? And the Prophet said, a believer with good character. Don't, compliment, don't complicate this. A Muslim who has good character, a believer who has good character, is operating from a good place. Focus on that. Don't focus on the circumstances. Don't focus on a very particular type of person. Focus on that. Now what makes this really important is that the Prophet ﷺ connected your pursuit to the poisons of the heart as well as how you interact with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the world around you all in one hadith. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala simplifies it by saying the following, Allah did not give two hearts to a single person. No human being has two hearts. You don't have two hearts. If you have two hearts, then you seemingly can have two contra contradicting sets of priority. Then you can have two purposes. Then you can have two loves. Then you can have two drivers. Then you can have two motivators. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Allah didn't give you two hearts. So when you claim to have those seemingly contradictory purposes and drives and priorities, you're only lying to yourself because Allah did not give you two hearts. Nor will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow one heart to possess you know, to build on this, one heart cannot possess two contradictory emotions. One narration the Prophet ﷺ said, no heart can carry both iman and envy, faith and envy. There's no such thing as a heart that can carry these two things and be true to the iman or, you know, actually hold hasad in what it contains, actually hold envy in what it contains. In another narration, he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, faith and greed cannot coexist in the heart of a single servant. So faith and greed and faith and envy. 
And you connect that, subhanAllah, to that hadith where the Prophet ﷺ mentioned the pure heart, conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, saleem, pure in regards to everybody else. Conscious in what it wants from Allah and how it's being perceived by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, pure, does not seek to violate or harm anyone else and does not covet what others have because it's so busy coveting the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now what does this have to do with our discussion today? The poisons of the heart are connected to a lack of purpose and priority. Greed and envy are connected to loving the world more than the hereafter. Both of these spiritual diseases are connected to loving the world more than the hereafter. And there's this idea that before you can pursue something great, you have to purge something evil. And look how Allah describes the Ansar. These people in Medina who received the Prophet ﷺ, they had to do something before they could receive the Prophet ﷺ. Their hearts had to be prepared. They chose faith. The Prophet ﷺ was not doing da'wah in Mecca. They chose Iman. They called for faith over to Medina. They wanted it. They desired it. They coveted it. They were sick of this dunya. They wanted that, right? So they're calling the Prophet ﷺ over from Mecca. We want what you're calling us to. We despise worldliness. We know very little of the hereafter, but we love it and we want that. So we're calling you here and we're going to voluntarily put ourselves at risk because we seek that reward so lovingly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Come to us, Ya Rasulullah. And how does Allah describe them? Allah says, they love those people that are coming to them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they did not have any type of hard feelings towards them, nor did they want what they had. They didn't have any hard feelings inside of them towards them, nor did they want what they had. So envy and greed are not present in the hearts of the Ansar. What does that mean? An Ansari is not thinking to himself like, hey, I heard uh, Abu Bakr is a really rich man. I heard Abdurrahman ibn Aus is a really rich man. Let me see if I can be that guy's brother. Bring him in and say, hey, you saved some money in Mecca. Can you transfer it to your new Medina account, which is shared by your new brother? None of that. They didn't want it. They were there in Quba, taking him in. Come to my house, come to my house, come to my house. And doing everything they possibly could. And Allah says, before they became that way, they made a conscious decision here. Their hearts were made ready to receive the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And subhanAllah, you notice that their hearts were ready to receive the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa because they cleared out the barriers of envy and greed. And that's exactly what stopped Abdullah bin Ubay bin Salul and the hypocrites from receiving the beauty of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Envy and greed, envy and greed. I want that, I want this. They don't deserve this, we deserve this. And that concept is present throughout the Qur'an. Are you ready to receive the Qur'an? Did we not open your chest, O Messenger of Allah, to make it ready to receive the Qur'an? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions people being ready to receive Jannah, we remove from their hearts resentment. You can't go to Jannah resenting each other. You can't go to Jannah resenting each other. And before you can think about facing one another on thrones in Jannah, you have to be willing to pray next to each other in these masajid. You've got to be willing to say salam to each other and meet your brothers and sisters with no resentment inside of you, no hatred, no envy, no ill will. You're not going to Jannah with these poisons. It's not befitting. Your heart has to be made ready for Jannah. And you've got to start working on that right now if you're pursuing a Jannah. And subhanAllah, the scholars say, look at the Prophets of Allah. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take away the most beloved things from His Prophets? Allah took Khadija radiallahu anha from the Prophet Allah took Ismail alayhi salam from Ibrahim alayhi salam. Why? Because as Al-Qurtubi says, their hearts had to be ready to receive a mission that only their hearts were fitted for, which was prophethood. And for them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cleared their hearts of everything but Allah, the permissible and the prohibited. Their hearts had to be full of one thing because your heart has to be prepared for the mission that you have. And that's only a mission of prophethood that a select few people were able to bear in this life and none of us are qualified for. So what does that mean for Ramadan? How do you have a heart that's ready to receive Ramadan? You have to remove the envy. You have to remove the greed. You have to remove the hatred. You have to remove the grudges in order to have a heart that's ready for Ramadan. You've got to remove that hatred from your heart in order to get it ready for Ramadan. Before the month of forgiveness, we have to forgive each other in this month. Before we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, purely dedicated towards Him, Ya Allah, forgive us, spend this month cleaning it up. Spend this month doing that plumbing because your heart has to be ready for Ramadan. And I want to end with a du'a from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's a profound one because some people will say, well, is there a du'a I can make? What do I do? First and foremost, you know what you need to do to repair and to reconcile. Get over your ego, remove it. Focus on the hereafter. What's more beneficial to my hereafter? And then let your heart be driven by that. But a beautiful du'a. And he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to say, Allahumma rabban nabi Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oh Allah, the Lord of the Prophet Muhammad. Allahumma rabban nabi Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ikhfir li dhanbi, forgive my sins. Wa adhib ghayd qalbi. And remove what is consuming my heart. Adhib ghayd qalbi. Remove that anger from my heart. SubhanAllah, you're asking Allah to remove it. Ikhfir li dhanbi. Wa adhib ghayd qalbi. Wa ajirni min mudullat al-fitan. And protect me 
from the trials of misguidance and fitna. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahumma firli, Allahumma rabba, rabba nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O oh Allah, the Lord of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if firli dhanbi, wa adhib ghayba qalbi, wa ajirni min mudullat al fitani. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from our sins, remove the anger, the consuming anger from our hearts, and protect us from the trials of fitan, the trials of misguidance in this world. Allahumma ameenu.